when we now pay us. This is Nanny Susanny and it's bedtime reading and last night we did a children's book. So tonight we're going back to the little kids first big book of why. And what are we going to read about tonight? Oh, the fascinating subject of hair. <laughs> Don't we always talk about hair? So, this is what it says. Why do I have curly hair? Now she has curly hair. I have wavy hair. And you, Winry, you have straight hair. So we don't all have curly hair. But it says hair grows through tiny straw-like tubes that are in your skin. These tubes are called follicles. Follicles can be different shapes. They can be round, they can be oval, or they can be almost flat. Our heads have over 100,000 follicles. Did you know that? 100,000, that's a lot. Do you know how many you have, Winry, and you have Alphaeus? You don't know. Do you know how many Nanny has? Nope, and nobody knows, but there's one person who knows. You know who that is? That's God, because he tells us in his word in the Bible in Luke 12 and 7, he says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So he says, don't be worried, don't fear, don't fret, don't be anxious. Because aren't we more precious to him than even like a flock of sparrows that he takes care of? That's how important we are. So he even knows the numbers of our hair. It says thick hair means you have bigger follicles, not more. So I would have bigger follicles. Your mama would have bigger follicles. But I'm not sure about you guys if your hair is thick, but our hair is thick. Do your parents have curly hair? If they do, chances are you do. But if they have flat hair, chances are you might get flat hair. It says flat follicles make curly hair. Oval follicles make wavy hair. So I would have oval follicles. And then round follicles make straight hair. So that's probably what you have, Winry and Alphaeus, I think so, and maybe Monty, we'll find out. The palms of your hands and of your feet have no follicles. That's how God made you. He probably figured we don't need any hair on the bottom of our feet or the palms of our hands because they'd be in the way. Uh, it would be a nuisance. So he did not create us with any follicles on the palms of our hands or the bottoms of our feet. Isn't that fascinating? And eyelashes are also a different kind of hair, your eyelashes here. It says, you might think that it hurts, but it doesn't if you were to get your hair cut. So when we, you're going to get your hair cut soon, and Alphaeus, I saw you in the chair one time getting your hair cut. It didn't hurt. Nope. If you break off a piece of your hair, it won't hurt because it's not alive. But if you take a piece of hair and you yank on it, you'll go, ouch. Because, you know, Winry, when mommy brushes your hair after she washes it, and, she's, and it's not untangled yet, and you go, ouch, it's because it's pulling it out of the follicles and it hurts. Because that part of your hair is alive, but the rest is not. Blondes have the most hair. Redheads have the least. And that's true. Cells are very cool. They are teeny tiny, almost invincible liquid filled packs of life. All living things have cells. And all living things grow because cells reproduce themselves. Cells make more of you. It says the woman in China has the longest hair on record, 18 feet. That's like almost three daddies, one on top of the other. That's how long her hair is. I don't know about you, but that would be a hindrance for me if I wanted to get in the car and go do groceries and I had to bring around this 18 feet of hair that would be crazy. She probably never leaves her house or gets out of a chair or out of the bed. 
because her hair is way too long. How does hair grow if it's not alive? Well, hair grows out of the tiny tubes in your skin called follicles. Remember the hair you pulled out from your head? Well, one of the ends is like a little bulb. That's the root where living cells come from. As the cells die, they are pushed out of the root into the follicle and the hair grows again. If you notice sometimes, Nanny always says, she's always picking up hair off of her clothes. So she loses hair all the time and that's what happens. It pushes them out, but then another hair comes growing right through all the time because Nanny never lacks any hair. All right, here's our just joking. Oh, I wanted to show you first pictures of, I have a few pictures of hair of you guys. And uh, just to show you the difference, well, I know you know what your hair looks like, but I thought, well, I'd show you. So this is Mama and Alphaeus. So see Mama's hair. And then Alphaeus, well, we can never tell what type of hair Alphaeus has because it's always cut or shaved. And Winry, what a beautiful picture. There you are. Your hair is getting pretty thick. And then, well, Monty, we're still not sure about Monty. There's a little bit of hair, but we don't know if he has curly, wavy, or straight hair. And we'll find out later on. Here's our just joking. Okay. So, our just joking says here, why are grapes never alone because they hang out in a bunch a bunch of grapes how do bees get to school <gasps> on the school bus cute here's a tongue twister say this three times real fast a moose nauseous much mush a noose a moose nauseous much mush a moose noshes much mush. A moose noshes much mush. That's a, a little bit hard. Yep. It says, what do you call a cow that doesn't give milk? A milk dud. Cute. Milk duds are little chocolates. This is a hamster. It says, the word hamster comes from the gr German word hamstern which means to hoard. <laughs> Look at him, is he ever cute? Here's a knock knock. Who's there? Olive. All of who? All of you. I love you. Oh, look at this. This says the rosate spoonbill's wingspan is more than four feet wide. That's like as tall as you, Winry, but that's the span of his wingspan. Here's a knock knock. Who's there? Dinosaur. <gasps> Dinosaur who? Dinosaur because he fell down. Oh, funny, 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 funny. So, because we talked about the bee, see, we talked about the bee and how it gets to school. There's a lot of bees right now. And bees are very special insects. And so I sent you a video to watch how bees make honey. And you're gonna go, huh? That's how they make honey? The honey is one of the best things. It's sweet and I love honey. It's one of Nanny's favorite things along with strawberry and rhubarb jam on her toast. She loves honey. And I have a story to tell you Remember you saw Auntie Lynn on the Zoom meeting on Sunday, on the family Zoom meeting? Well, when Nanny was your age, Winry, and Auntie Lynn was Monty's age, Auntie Lynn was in a crib, and Grammy said to Nanny, when Auntie Lynn started crying, can you go over and put the soother in her mouth at the pacifier? So what I would do is I'd go, and we had a jar or a glass of honey on the dresser and I would dip it in the honey and I would put it in, in Auntie Lynn's mouth and she'd stop crying. 
Now, we don't want to do that today because honey has a lot of sugar. It's not good for the teeth, but back then, this is what we did. So one day, I remember, she asked me to do it. Auntie Lynn was crying, so I went over. I put the pacifier in. I gave it to Auntie Lynn. I put the jar back on the dresser, and I put it on the edge. I didn't put it completely on the dresser, so it tipped, and honey went all the way down the dresser onto the floor. What a mess, and I didn't want to tell Grammy. I didn't want her to be upset with me, so I was trying to clean it. Well, you try cleaning a lot of honey. It's not easy. Honey, sticky, 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 and it was not easy. Ugh. So I remember that still to today. So that's my story about honey today, and I hope you enjoy the video about bees. It's really sweet and very educational. And so you want to be careful with bees. They may, you may think that they're going to uh, sting you, but they don't. They don't unless you're really trying to hurt them. They're not like wasps. So if bees are buzzing around, you just let them do their thing and they won't even hurt you. You're such wonderful insects. So that's my story today. And tonight, as you go to bed, have sweet dreams. And I know God's going to place his angels over you. And um, so t today is still hot. Nanny was mowing lawns again. And she was working in her garden, spacing her, her plants. And, uh, and it's hot. Jeez, ugh. So um, tomorrow's supposed to be a lot cooler. Tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday is like high of 18 or 20 and kind of rainy. I'll take that. If it can get rid of the humidity and the heat, I don't mind that at all. So anyways, I love you. And you know I booked my flight because remember I called and I asked mommy about the dates. So now September 2nd, you want to circle that on your calendar, Winry. And you want it now it's seven weeks. It's a lot of days. It's 49, 50 days before Nana gets there. But you start Xing those off, and the next thing you know, we'll be down to like four sleeps, three sleeps, two sleeps, one sleep, and then I'll be there. And I'm so excited to go see you. So until then, here's your nanny kisses to Monty, to Alphaeus, and to Winry. And know that Nanny and Grampy and Opa and Mamir and Uncle Michael and Nana, we love you so much. And you have a good night's sleep, and have a great day tomorrow. Love you.